Welcome back to Fast Gadgets. We're going to talk about something from an article that I read regarding ageism in uh, information technology. Now, this particular article pertains to those who are older, usually older than 40, but I am going to talk about the younger generation as well and outline and discuss what's been happening with many of my IT students when they apply for jobs and how it affects them. So we're going to go through all of that. We're going to talk about ageism both from the older point of view and the younger point of view because I think both of them need to be discussed. So this article that came out by Bob Violino, I think his name is, I really am not sure. Uh, it was an article that was written for CIO Magazine, talked about the hard truths of navigating ageism in IT and some of those concerns that we have both as an older worker and as younger workers. Uh, I, this one, again, this article only addresses the older worker, but the younger workers are experiencing ageism of a sort as well, and I want to address that as well and not diminish what I am seeing for my students, especially those that work very hard and do a very good job, are usually valedictorians of their class or very high up in their class and we're going to talk about what happens to them when they go out and apply for jobs so let's talk about older employees first there is a problem um, ageism is definitely strongest according to this article in certain industries like technology and I think that that is the case now I am now 48 years old and I have not seen yet an effect of ageism because usually the positions that I'm applying for are higher up uh, and so I don't have as much of an issue and lately of course I've been dealing strictly with uh, the education environment so I've been teaching information technology and I've been doing it for a while so uh, I have the credentials that I need to do that and I kind of fit in this niche if you will it's a little bit different for me Unfortunately, though, you do see that in technology, organizations are looking for workers that are younger and more vibrant and usually fresh out of college. So that's one of the problems that we're seeing uh, in trying to get positions in information technology. Uh, another problem does affect female workers, and they tend to suffer more than men from ageism so it is a serious problem for the older female information technology workers and the firms tend to target younger individuals fresh out of college they will accept lower wages uh, they ask for less time off they're typically single career driven um, they're hungry if you will and some of this is stereotypical so it's not the case for everybody but that is the perception when it comes from the employer so think of it that way and you can see this in other companies like Google um, I've heard this being the case in Amazon and other technology driven companies where they really want that younger niche now if you are a younger worker on the other side of the coin the problem is companies seem to want this um, perfect medium of a young worker and they're not saying it out loud necessarily but they would like them to be single and have four or five years of experience and still expect lower wages for what they do now there are positions out there and there are individuals out there employers that are hiring and they're realistic about experience requirements and the wages that they're going to offer but right now it really is the employers market unfortunately we do have a lot of people uh, seeking employment but there's less positions uh, available so what's happening is they can actually pick and choose and they're doing just that so if you look in the article here, they're saying, yeah, their, their preference is for younger workers. Well, the 
problem with that from what I'm hearing from my students after they graduate or slightly before graduation and I'm talking about the cream of the crop students these are the ones that I endorse wholeheartedly and know that these students are definitely primed for if not entry then a mid-level position they're capable of doing that work and they basically go in and apply for these jobs and they're not considered right in the application process it wants them to have four to five years of experience for an entry-level position well that's not very likely many students will have internships which is a good thing if you get an internship especially if it's a paid internship you can work for a while and get some experience and then make more money later on in the future uh, so that's helpful but I really do feel bad for the younger generation because in in some respects they are also an object of ageism and unfortunately for them it does affect them as much as it does the older worker just in a different way now I have seen all types of employees I've done hiring myself and I've worked with organizations and consortiums of organizations and I have seen IT workers that are perfectly happy to rest on their laurels what they knew instead of learning new technologies and what they need to know to excel in the workplace I think no matter what age you are it's important to be in a position where you're willing to show that you will excel in the workplace you don't necessarily have to be the person that's going to work 80 hours a week and and just go overboard but you do have to show that you have an interest in technology and you're willing to continue to develop your skill set on an ever-changing market and I have instructed my students you cannot expect the work the the technology workplace to be history so if you wanted a history degree go get that but this technology is living and changing it's kind of like the medical field nothing is the same a year down the road everything is changing constantly and that is the unfortunate truth of the technology field you just got to be ready to embrace change so that's one of the ways that you can uh, combat ageism in your position or in a technology related job you've got to be willing to embrace new technology now for the younger generation what I've seen typically from my student body I have two types I have students that come in and they just want to know why things work the way they work there they are hungry to learn about new technology and that's what drove them to get a position in IT then we have the other student type they basically are in a position where they've decided well we're here because we heard there you can make good money in technology so we just want to get the degree and graduate they do zero outside research of any type regarding technology and learning the most learning they do is usually on their iPhone or an Android and they just basically play with it download apps and things like that so I can tell right away because when we talk in lecture and when we talk in the labs especially for students that are getting closer to the end of their four-year degree uh, I'll ask them simple things have you heard of WannaCry do you know what Wanna Decryptor is no I don't what what is it I don't know anything about it they're not reading about technology and staying abreast and learning new things related to their field and if they don't do that they can expect not to get a good position with higher pay when you go into your interview some of those questions will come up they're gonna ask some of the typical questions in an interview but they're also gonna probe to see what your knowledge set and learning is about technology and if it's related to security for example uh, they're going to ask about the latest hacks and issues out there and kind of probe and see if you actually know about it and if you understand what the ramifications are and what you can do to reduce or mitigate the risk to a company so just knowing oh yeah I heard about wanted decryptor that's that's some kind of ransomware right it's causing some kind of problem out there isn't sufficient if you're in an interview 
you need to know more than that. You need to have done research and understand what are the ramifications to a business if they were to be infected with this. What might happen to them? How will they protect against it? What is the cost of protecting against this particular ransomware? Questions like that. So the deep questions that show a level of research into your chosen field. So you got to be willing to embrace new technology, and this doesn't matter if you're younger or older, especially when you're walking into an interview. This next one, how to combat ageism, is a big one, in my opinion, probably the biggest one. Aside from having to embrace new technology, you need to be a leader, not a follower. So if you're the one who says, yeah, that sounds like a good idea, let's, let's implement that. If you're the person who's offering suggestions and went out there and did research and found equitable solutions for the company you work for, you are a leader. And I would like to point out that research, if you think about it, just the term research, it's more than what you think. It's not just doing a search and finding the first of three hits and saying yeah this will work out just great we'll use this technology there's a reason there's a re in research you're doing it more than once you're learning about the technology and when you do a search you also want to find out who's using it so you might look in IEEE to see who's adopted that technology and what authors are writing about it so you find a couple of authors that are writing about it then you find who is citing that work and see if somebody else is saying it's good technology you might want to look for opposing point of views right so you're researching this technology to make sure it's right for your company and then once you think that this is the appropriate technology the next big question on somebody's mind is what's the cost factor how are we going to implement this and what will it cost so if you're able to answer those questions, you have shown you are a leader in technology, not a follower. Don't be a follower. It's, it's not the end of the world to be a follower, but when it comes to layoffs, whether you're 55 or you're 25, if you show you are vital, we can't lay that person off because we really need them. They're actually vital to my organization I, I can't lay them off they've come with us come to us with many different types of suggestions and implementation of new technologies we can't get rid of them we need them so think of that be a leader not a follower offer ideas on new technologies don't be the one to say that sounds like a great idea and even worse if you are a follower if you say how do I implement that then you're showing that you are not the leader not everybody can be a leader right so I'm not saying it's necessarily bad to be a follower but you do put yourself in a more vulnerable position unfortunately we talked about continual research in your chosen field so you do need to be able to embrace your technology but you've got to be doing continual research and that is one of the major criticisms of my students is that they're actually not interested in technology at all. They want to know how they can get paid to make more money by using this degree. And then they go into an interview and they actually don't know anything about technology except what they learned in class, which is okay. But this is a career. A career is meaning that you're actually pursuing not just the education, but a body of knowledge that you have grown that shows that you're a proactive leader in technology. Now, this is something that's important no matter how old you are. Keep any feedback on your performance and your work evaluations. Very important. And watch for any changes, and if you do see them, address them immediately. And this was a point made by Violino here, or Violino, not sure how to pronounce his name, in his article and I absolutely agree with the author here he's saying it's very important that um, if you're getting good reviews year after year and then the company falls on hard times and you get a poor evaluation the next year you want to address that right away you want to know why and how it can be fixed 
And if it's showing that, you know, your methods the previous year were considered excellent in your evaluation and then this year they're not, I would want to address that immediately and know why. So the reason is if there's going to be a round of layoffs, you may be one of those people targeted. So you do want to watch for that. If you're not getting any feedback, it's even worse. It's very important that you get written feedback and have a discussion with your manager as to your position. How am I doing? Am, am I succeeding the way you had hoped? Am I offering new technologies to the company that have been helpful in, uh, you know, it's not that IT is profitable necessarily, but at least controlling cost in the information technology cost center. So are you helping to control costs? Um, if you do have any age related statements or in, uh, incidents, you want to keep a record of those. So it's possible, uh, whether you're younger or older, somebody can say you just don't have the experience we had hoped, or you're not growing the way we would hope. Or if you're older, uh, according to this article, you know, some say, don't you want to be home with the grandkids or home with the kids. Watch out for those comments and make notes of those. If you do get laid off, you are entitled to a list of position and ages of employees, according to this article, through your company. And this is a federal mandate. So the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission uh, does allow for you to get a listing of the layoffs and their ages. This is important because it will indicate whether or not you're being laid off based on age. At the very least, it'll show a pattern. Let me see if I can find that. Yeah, pattern recognition. If you end up being the object of ageism and you suspect there is actual cases of bias against you, then consider I would definitely consider at that point reporting it with the local HR the HR department in your organization and let them know uh, that you're aware of EEOC laws and requirements and that you consider this an act of ageism against you if you get to that point where you can see where basically things are headed and they're probably trying to push you out one way or the other. If it gets bad enough, you may want to file a grievance with the EEOC, which in some ways would offer you some levels of protection because it immediately tells the organization you're working with that you are quite aware that an act of ageism has taken place and it will offer you a little bit of insulation because it can't just terminate you right away. For some other reason, it would look way too suspicious. So there's a better chance that you may not be laid off. So that's my talk about ageism, both for the young and the older. You really got to be that type of person that's out there trying to learn about new technology outside of work. If you don't really have a genuine interest in it, I don't recommend doing it. You want to have an interest in the career you're becoming involved in lead don't follow do your research in your chosen field and this isn't something you can do for a few months this is something you basically are doing every week i probably read i would say about a hundred pages of technology based articles and information that interests me uh, and they tend to vary, like this article about ageism, I think it's important to address and to, to discuss and be aware of. But you really have to be looking into your chosen field and understanding all the nuances and changes, especially now. It seems like things are happening faster than ever and you have to be aware of it and on top of it. Uh, at least you should be able to account for, even if you don't know all the infinite details of some of these things that are out there, in the technology field you should be aware of most of them because you know at some point your boss is going to ask you about something and there's no crime in not knowing I'm not saying you have to know everything that's impossible but uh, and if you don't know say I don't know about that particular instance I'll have to do some research on it sometimes the bosses see a headline you know that's popular and they think they know about technology or they want to talk about it and that's great and you just haven't seen it yet which is completely understandable you do have other things going on in your life but 
try not to let that happen too much. If, if it's happening to you more than 75% of the time, you're probably not doing enough or any research in your chosen field. So keep that in mind. I hope you enjoyed this discussion. I really like talking about topics like this that are related to technology. If you did, let me know. Drop me a comment. And as always, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time on Fast Gadgets.